Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So I'm back today with a special video with Asian Elite. We're doing a special collab. He's a YouTuber and a streamer. He do mostly does um, account reviews on his on his Twitch channel. He, he goes and goes into your account and he basically fixes your account, um, tells you what to do, and he kind of specializes in that. He's also the creator of the, the, the Monster Super League Super Guide. Uh, that basically goes through everything that you need to know in the game from golems, from rushing through mid game to uh, doing dragons and all that stuff. So yeah, he's, he's a really, really knowledgeable, knowledgeable player. Um, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, so I'm here um, with two accounts, uh, Ragnarok, or not Ragnarok anymore, not Six and Babloom. Um, I am uh, I use, mainly use my alt account for the Monster Super League Super Guide. Uh, again, I am actually the creator of the entire Super Guide, um, with some um, contribution from other players that provided some input to what I need to place on the guide to help the new players. So my main focus is to try to help the new players, try to get to make game as fast as they can, and also progress through the game towards the late game stages as fast as possible. But that's for their own terms, but I'm just here more of a support once you get to know, like once you get to talk to me on my own stream. Um, like he also said, where I do account reviews, um, I do have a sign up for that more likely, and there is some requirements that needs to be put through, and you are required to be on stream. Um, so yeah, um, that is me right now. Um, back to you. Dan. All right. So I think the first thing um, a lot of people would ask me about, and um, I think you you're very knowledge about knowledgeable about is the rush to mid game. Um, how you actually you know start start a new account as a new player? How do you get to mid game? How do you start farming the high levels of golems as soon as possible? All right. So what this exactly where Babloon comes into play with these new account? Um, Babloon is actually my like eighth alt account that I've done, and doing this multiple time as a new player, the moment you're able to get to chat, um, you always you add strong Ashmon lead. For example, this Dark Mona, he has a lead. We request. Do that through all chat. If you ran out of players in one channel, go to the next channel. Let's say I'm on 24, go to 25. Boom, done. Um, so the mid game rush guide is very consistent where you do use those players as to where you go to the scenarios here. You rush through every single one of these stages. You get through the first continent, go to the second mm -hmm. continent, completely finish the second continent through normal by doing Star Sanctuary normal. Repeat the process by going to the second continent again because you can't skip the first continent. So basically, you go to Pegasus Coast Hard, um, go to Star Sanctuary Hard, complete it, and then you can finally stop at Pegasus Coast Extreme. And that's where my mid game um, guide actually recommend you to start farming your EXP and jumps. The reason why I have people to farm Pegasus Coast is the fact that you need resist jumps and you want the four star one. Resist is extremely important for later. Like it's it's the fastest actually, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't have to go to the next stages in terms of seabed caves, magma crags, or something like that. Those will slow your run, so Pegasus Coast will probably be your fastest and most EXP, EXP um, efficient compared to the first continent. I mean, you can try it on the first continent, but you know what? I'd rather have people go on resist to prepare themselves for later game content. Late game content will require a huge amount of resist, but instead of going for these actual resist gem, you'll be going for the resist substat, for example. Um, in PvP, Late game resist is ideal for your defense team. So, you know your your uh, recommendation of going into chat and adding people. I never actually thought of that. That that's like pure genius. I I never never would have thought to to actually be able to do that. Like uh, I I would always <laughs> on my on my old account I would just like add uh, people that like the the game recommended to me. So <laughs> I only have like these low level people. I haven't thought of like going into chat and just adding these high level players. And then getting yep, a whole having, bunch of having those uh, fifty high level monsters as well as those five supporters mm -hmm. get you through these extremely fast. And you probably want to start using supporters once you get to Lunar Valley. Yeah. Um, normal. And it just plows through. Go back to here. You, like once you get to Pegasus Coast Extreme, your monsters probably you probably have at least one or two max level Ashmon if you're loving one Ashmon at a time, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend you to do because you can start stacking Ashmon with like once you get to the reps, you have one rep two max levels and then you're leveling your Ashmons basically before yeah. you get to the part where you have three max levels and then you're own. and you will be using like your you will be like once you build your water team 
Like, let's see here. I was able to farm Pale's Coast Extreme on my own with a Water Siren Evil 2, level 40, a Water Lat Evil 3, level 40, and a Water Mona Evil 2, level 40. And they were on 4 star gem with at least plus 6. I use more towards HP flat as my beginning um, gems to get to Pegos Coast Extreme. So my water mode would be like HP flat, attack, attack percentage. My water lat would be HP percentage, HP percentage, and attack percentage. It doesn't really matter how you put your water lat because water lat is extremely tanky in general. And the water sign would be HP flat times 3, or you can use either HP percentage, doesn't really matter for the water mode. Uh, water mm -hmm. siren because she can self heal. And you use a water sign as the leader, always, because she is the one that you want to take the blunt. So, and before you, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, would you recommend going to like Arya Lake and farming a variant water siren? Like, is that like top priority? Or I mean, once you get it to Evil Two, um, you can use it to farm Bagel's Coast. For now, um, I would definitely go back to Arya Lake on normal to farm for water signs, unless mm. you're able to summon the rest. I mean, you you guys would be doing like. As a new player, you probably do up to at least five, ten plus ones before you stop. Before I t consider you to t stop doing summons and wait for a hero festival, something like that, oh, or you I just see. wait for hero festival in general. Um, so yeah, evil two water sign definitely at Pegos Coast. Um, then I definitely requirement uh, require a water sign to be evil three by the time you get to B seven golems or B eight golems um, because B eight golems completely different. Like you're jumping from B one to B eight. Oh, and that's yeah, considered see. ML. Yes, you do use reps as well to get from B1 to B8. <laughs> um, like, for example, B7, you probably need a wood valk or something like that. Yeah, I see. Um, so, a little bit more question about the like using conviction gems versus the, the other gems. You're basically uh, recommending using conviction gems mainly because Pago Coast is easier to farm? Or? Overall, easier to farm. Extremely easy to farm. And also because of the new update like last time it was i would probably say you can go for c but like before the update where b8 was still light dungeon mm -hmm. i can you can actually go to seabed caves and farm there for yes. protector jumps because you can start working on a wood team instead to get you ready for b7 golems but now with the b8 golems with the fire the fire uh, golem all right yeah. so with this water team that you're making for pagos coast you can directly transfer that pagos coast team over to b8 using conviction gems only at plus nine for a full water team so i guess pagos coast now would be the prime recommendation um just because it's a new update i think um so just something i want to add for newer players that don't really understand the the um, why we're, we're farming this map is mainly because on pagos coast the monsters are fire and water and if you're using a water team, um, we basically have elemental advantage against fire, and your element is neutral against water. So you, you have mostly an advantage on Pagos Coast. And Alright, so um, you want to you wanna try like doing a run, you know, showing, <laughs> showing whatever your, team, your, your newbie team is for, for Pagos Coast? For Pagos Coast? Oh, yeah. but first of all, a lot of beginners like to do this. They will farm in either stages 1, 2, 3, and guess what? Mm -hmm. Your team will die. You're fighting against a Water Pinchy, which counters the same elements. So oh, the water, dang. Yeah, this is, what I've, this is what I've been running into a lot of problems with new players been asking me. is like, I can't do Pagos Coast. Like, which stages are you doing? I'm doing 3 for Gold Bonus. Like, Water Team is ineffective against that because a Water Pinchy would definitely just completely d obliterate your team. Um, the test is it as before as well. Um, primarily it was because of the double water pinchy, the double chance water pinchy, and I was like, no, go straight to six, go straight to stage six, they did it, they were like, oh, this is so much easier, I was oh, like, yeah. yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> you probably only have problems with the chest, but the chest only accepts, you know, so, you know, there's not that much problem, so this was, um, so I had a water valve, but I did it without the water valve, so, if you guys want a clear demonstration, um, I did use a water sign here, a water mona, and I did try to have my water lat on the very last. Actually, my water lat was on the second part, but definitely um, that was just to make sure that the water, if the water siren dies, the water lat takes the next mm -hmm. until you're able to clear it. But now I actually prefer having the water siren, the water mona, your leveling ashmon, let's say water mona here, and my water lat. So the mobs usually go for the very first or the very last ashmon, typically. So. It's either water right. mode, uh, so in terms of efficiency, you definitely want your DPS tower to be in the center if you can. And you want me to do a quick run? Yeah, sure, sure. You can do a quick run. 
Now, you do have like better gems on them, but um, you can oh, basically yeah. do this with just four plus, star gems. Yeah, four star gem plus six recommended at least, and that's not that much gold if you actually conserve your gold. Make sure um, I should have made a guide on this part on whether what to spend gold on as a new player. So mm -hmm. you, you want to talk much, a, a little bit about that or? Uh, so ideally, a lot of people who spend their gold, they I I okay so. When you're leveling, when you're getting to Pegasus Ghost Extreme, don't upgrade your one, two, and three star gems ever. They're gonna be useless. Save okay. them until you get the four star gem. That's why you have the reps, right? I mean, you can do this 50, like you can do it 55 times a day, mm -hmm. which is good enough to get you some four star gem at least. If not, then just spend the rest of your time farming normals for the three star that you need. Um, do your gold dungeons definitely. Try to go as high as you can. If you know that you failed, then just stop there. That you know that's your break point. But once you're able to get like a Pegasus Coast team up to like level 50, you should be able to do all of the gold dungeons. Alright. Uh, um, another question is like, you know, how the bingo event and other events are giving a lot of like 6 star gems. Would it be worth uh -huh. upgrading the th those gems early on? Like it's it's actually quite expensive. And also the flat Pers ones. Yes, or percentage, like percent, all the percentage are definitely worth it except crit damage, resist percentage. Always sell your crit damage and your risk percentage. Uh, resist is up to six star. Do not use any resist percentage. They, they are a waste of stat. Crit damage, I would say six star gems only are effective, but they need crit rate substat on it. Um, yeah. What else here? Crit rate gems, since you're gonna go for B8 anyways, you might as well just go for six star gems if you can. So right. you sell your five star and below. Um, let's see here. Percentage, everything else percentage, like attack, defense, HP percentage, definitely worth building. Yes, you can use it as a new player. You can definitely start upgrading early on. Um, Attack flat and HP flat, in my opinion, are probably the best out of auto flat that you can start upgrading early on. All right, all right. I think I, I think I did it right on my ult. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like, see, if you're just like comparing for a four star gem to a six star gem, like four star attack percentage to a six star attack flat gem, attack mm -hmm. flat that six star attack flat definitely overrules a four star gem. Yeah. All right, yeah. there's my um, quick little two minute run here, which is basically your norm. If you really want to speed up your Pegasus Coast run, um, you definitely need level 60, which I don't have just yet. I've been all stuck at level right. 50 for a while. And you need SP Cycle. <laughs> right. That's about it for the Pegasus Coast part.